The Paul Leslie Interviews. It's our great pleasure to welcome Eric Jennings. He's the man behind Geisha Hit Squad and Black Lion Reggae, his two bands. I think most stories are best from the beginning. Where are you from? I was born in Carborough, North Carolina, a little town in North Carolina. And where did the music start for you? My mom. Listening to records that she played around the house. Motown, Marvin Gaye, Diana Ross, James Brown, and the radio, hearing rock and roll. What would you say were the records that were the most influential to you? The records that were the most influential. My friends in high school turned me on to what's considered today classic rock. Oh, and I remember hearing Star Spangled Banner by Hendrix on the radio, and that changed my life. But records, I would say, there's a Marvin Gaye record. He's got a red toboggan on. It's, I think it's called What's Going On. Or, and I can see the album cover, but I can't remember the name. That one was a huge influence. Love, Earth, Wind, and Fire when I first heard him. But then... I gotta say, Highway to Hell by ACDC. I gotta say, Quadrophenia by The Who. Because at home, we were listening to black music. But around ninth, tenth grade, my friends were turning me on. Oh my God, Neil Young. So I was getting influenced by rock and roll as well. And it all mattered. So what would you say it is it about a song or about a recording about a performance, whatever. What is it about a particular piece of music that grabs you? What gets your attention? If I feel something. I no longer say, because I used to say for the longest time, I don't like this. or, And nowadays I say, it doesn't or it hasn't resonated with me yet. But for me personally, yes, it's there's music that has made me cry. There's music that's made me feel like I'm on top of the world. And a lot of it is identification. Hearing something from someone that I've never met, but yet they create something where I totally identify 100% with what they're talking about, whether I've been through the situation or not. So that, and it could be even without words. Some chords, some melodies, some things just grab me and, and keep me. But, but if I had to sum it all up in one word, I would say being able to identify with them. Why do you perform? It makes me happy. I don't want to say music completes me. That sounds kind of weird. I'm a whole person <laughs> without, you know, my guitars and, and my music. And also, I don't want to say, oh, there are a lot of things that, you know, music is one of the three things that make me feel good about being alive. That that would be a total lie. A lot of things I enjoy. But I love creating something. No one can tell me that I'm getting it wrong. And I'm a control freak. <laughs> I get to, you know, I get to make something just the way I want it. So that when I'm done with it, I can say, cool. And I enjoy that. It also gives me an opportunity, I guess, to use a certain part of my brain to create. And and also, even, even as a kid, it was something I could do by myself. I read a lot of... I still read a lot, but as a kid, I was considered... I didn't think I was weird, but but I could get in a room by myself with my little guitar and I mean what are what are songs but poems put to music. So I would write and and, and deal with the rhythm of how this word would fit and how this would rhyme. So the whole little process being eleven, twelve, was like, wow, you know, no one can take this from me or screw it up. 
I guess to sum it all up, and would self satisfaction sound a little arrogant? No. But I mean, I and I will say this: I, I will say I, I, I am a musician that will say. I know narcissistic is such a bad word, but it is music. To me, is self self indulgent is. And I, and I think a lot of times people don't want to say that, but it's very narcissistic. You say to yourself, look at what I can do. <laughs> and you go, this is great. I made this. And, 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 and I think a part of that is healthy, you know? In what way? In what way do you think it's healthy? Because I think we live, we live in a world of comparison. I heard a friend of mine say comparison is a thief, is a thief of joy. And we live in a world where conformity and this is what sounds good. And and the beauty of music is you can say, well, no, this is what I like. And you can create something. It's kind of like a fingerprint. We've all got different ones. Mm -hmm. And I also mix music as well. And, you know, I've heard recording where, like, it's okay if the bass is too loud. It's okay if the backing vocal is a little bit louder than the lead the lead it's okay if you, if you listen to some count a lot of stuff the beatles did at abbey road those recordings weren't perfect but the songs were amazing you know you were mentioning earlier that you like some sometimes the fact that it's something you can work on all by yourself so are you in some ways a solitary kind of person my knee-jerk reaction is to say no, and a lot of people, and even me to a certain degree, I consider myself an extrovert, but there is a side of me where I really, really enjoy pulling away, or, you know, like I, I would, where I'm at at this point in my life, I would never want to live in the heart of the city, you know, I would prefer to live 10 20 miles away and be able to get in and get out. But I, I, I do. I like, the more I think about it, yeah, I like my quiet. I can think that. And then with playing out, because, you know, between Black Line Reggae and my other band and, and the solo acoustic stuff, so I'm constantly surrounded by people. So I, I really do cherish my to answer your question, yes. <laughs> <laughs> How did Black Lion Reggae form? Well, I was thinking to myself, I think it was a fish, I think the website or officially it became in like January of 2015, but the November, October before that, I remember sitting around and I was like, okay, I want to do something different because I have my original band, Fisha Hit Squad. I said, all right, what's going to be financially lucrative or, or what? You know, because there are a lot of great ideas, but the bottom line is, will this idea make money? Okay? And I thought about it, and I was like, okay, here in Atlanta, which is an amazing music town, but we've, we've got tons of this genre. We've got tons of that genre. We, 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 we've got blues out of the game game. We've got hip hop. We've got country we've got all these amazing things in these genres that to me are saturated so it would just be not smart to jump on those trains so i thought about it because i played reggae years ago i toured up and down the east coast with a band from north carolina called the amateur i had a lot of fun I did that for about three and a half four years and then i quit to pursue my rich and so I'm like, okay, what would make a great side project, but like I said, that would generate income? So I got to thinking, and I was like, okay, Reagan, I don't hear about it here in Atlanta. You go to Florida, you get near the beach, but right here, you know, asphalt, you know, in between 285, you know, I'm like, okay, wow. And, and, and not that there's culture for it here. But it's just not what you see in the spectator. You see a passing band every now and then. You'll see a famous artist playing here or there, but it's not a staple. 
So I was like, okay, cool. Reggae, I, I, I know, a, I know some really good musicians, some pros who would take to it like a fish out of water. I mean, a fish to water because they're that good. And I know I could do it as, as well, have experience. And then the, but the catch was, okay, where do you go after the five Marley songs that everyone knows? You know, Steered Up, One Love, No Woman, No Cry, Three Little Bird. And, you know, in Alpharetta, that's about it. <laughs> you know, so I got to thinking to myself, okay, to really make this marketable, what about a reggae cover band? Do the classics, do the Marley. Give the people exactly what they want. Exactly what they want. And, okay, what about Turn the Page by Bob Seger? What about... Wrecking Ball by Miley Cyrus. You know, what about Don't Stop Believing by Journey? What about Hotline Bling by Drake? So my mind just, so I just remember just writing down all these songs and a lot of them, I had a lot of material to pull from because I play solo acoustic cover song in restaurants anyway, which is one of the other things I do. So I was like, it's already there. Switch it from here to here. So I went into my studio and I started messing around with some of these songs in authentic reggae fashion. And um, so I came up with the first two ones were Fire to the Rain by Adele and Inner City Blues by Marvin Gaye. Imagine that. <laughs> and I did them what I consider authentic reggae style, and they came out great. So I said, I'm going to follow this. So far, for good. What song have you performed with? Black Lion Reggae, that's not a Marley song, not a Peter Tosh song, not a so-called reggae song that has gone over the best with the audience. I would really say Turn the Page by Bob Seger. That's a classic. We tend to, a lot of times we may end the show with that one, and it's one that people never see coming. And then I would say because people love to sing along. Another one, the one of the latest ones we've been doing is Send My Love by Adele. And that one has been going over really well. Is there a song that you most want to do that you're thinking in the back of your mind? What if we reworked this one? There's a couple that I've got on the hit list. I'm trying to see if they'll come to me now. Even though it's been done before. There's a, I think they're called the Dub, the Dub Stars, but they do a version of Karma Police by Radio. Okay. And I really want to, I really want to tap into that one. I wouldn't mind doing, and I think, I wouldn't be surprised if it hasn't already been done, but Country Rose by John Denver. Wow. Jet Plane by John Denver. What a strong writer. What his stuff is so clean. What I love, what I love about Denver is it wasn't cluttered. And now you're making me think of like Jim Croce and Pat Steven. So to pick from songs that are just timeless, you know. As far as newer stuff, nothing really, nothing really comes to mind right now. I do like Rihanna. I love her voice. Shine bright like a diamond is one that I think if I was to sit down and work with it, we can, we can make it go over really well. You mentioned earlier the other band that you have, Isha Hit Squad. Mm. That's your main band? That's my band. Okay. That's so band. what does that mean exactly? <laughs> what does the name mean? Yeah. You know, I would love, you know, Paul, I would love to be able to sit here and tell you this big elaborate story <laughs> but there isn't one geisha hit squad is when i started it years ago i was sitting down with a pen and a piece of paper and i like phonetic i like the way certain word or sound i like the rhythm of words i'm still kicking myself in the face for not having learned french yet i will learn french because even though I don't understand what they're saying, I just it just sounds like music to my ear. So subconsciously, 
I was sitting down and, and I said, okay, I, I want to do it. I want to do an original project. And obviously, the Eric Jennings band is not an option. Don't want to do that. So I was like, and I wrote these things down. Da 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 da. And and eventually, it just nope nope no. And I just and, and <laughs> Keisha Hit Squad. And I was like, Keisha Hit Squad. Hmm. Nickname G H S. The Hit Squad. Easy to remember. You can't screw it up. There are people going to say Geisha and Geisha, but still, it's not like the Flying Fathead Burrito Brothers Dash 12 A614Z. It's not this big, long thing. And I was like, okay. But these words are just, you know, am I going to be interpreted for like a ninja female assassin group? <laughs> Come on out. But who cares? So what? So, it was the first thing that made me stop writing. It made me just put the brakes on and go, well, okay. But as far as the meaning, I guess kind of like the psychedelic fur. And many bands. And many bands, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, I've been wanting to tell people over the years, because I, every now and then I get the strongest urge to tell people what it means, but maybe one day. But it, <laughs> so why is why is it your baby? This is your chance to most create the music that you want to create, correct? It is freedom. It is the playground in my head where I go to make the intangible tangible. I so wish that because I've done a lot of hard work and 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 hopefully through marketing and and social media. Hopefully, it will, my original stuff will become more exposed because I strongly believe that if it is heard, it will be acknowledged. Total freedom. Total, I don't want to say total, I don't care. There, but, but it's the canvas that I paint upon to, and it goes back to some of the original stuff you asked me. Um, it's not for the people, it's for me. And, I share it, and I hope people like it. And also, it, it's the umbrella is huge. Under the moniker Geisha Hit Squad, could be everything from me and a friend of mine playing solo acoustic, Neil Youngish, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Youngish, Brian Wilson harmony, all the way to a full-on four-piece. Led Zeppelin meets Cream meets Tool meets Radiohead. Just, there is no, how do you say, cutoff. I'll use, on certain songs I've used, you know, electronica, drum machine. And I also got, forgotten to mention, I love Peter Gabriel. <laughs> but, um, it, yeah. So, uh, it's my thing. To tell everybody a little backstory. We're recording this in the back office of Jay's Cigar and Coffee in Atlanta, Georgia. And that's where we met. So tell us a little bit about your love of cigar. Hmm. My love of cigar. I don't have many vices. I don't drink. No pork, beef, or chicken. Occasional fish. Every now and then. You, know, you can't go to the beach or can't go to New Orleans. So, ten years ago, I was hanging out with a friend of mine, and he said, have you ever had a cigar? And I said, no, because when I think of cigars, I think of you know, not having any experience. I thought of, I said, is he going to, like, pull out a white owl or a swisher? Or I'd heard of the, the upper epsilon, but when I think of cigars, that wasn't my first thought. He says, I said, no. He says, well... Have you ever had a Cuban cigar? I said, no. And my friend handed me a Monte Cristo number two. And it was probably one of the most pleasurable moments of the conversation. Because to me, it, it is definitely about cigar. But it's definitely about the company. So now I, I'll have a nice cup of coffee or a cup of hot tea or... um even water if I don't want any coloration on the palate when it comes to the stick or a good book or hanging out with some good people. 
it's the only vice I have, so I tend to enjoy it. <laughs> this is, might sound kind of strange. Do you find that smoking a cigar makes you focus in on another person more? Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I've never thought about that. But now that you've asked, I would say, yeah. I would say overall, yeah. What I think it might be is that a cigar commands that you slow down. I mean, nobody ever says, I'm going to run in here for five minutes and smoke a cigar. Relaxing, you know. That's a good point. It, and, and it is, I do look at them as downtown. Yeah. What is the best thing about being Eric Jennings? God. <laughs> I got to say, you're really awesome at what you did. I, I did not see that coming. Wow. What is the best thing about me? <laughs> Woo. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the mark of a great interviewer. <laughs> the best thing about being Eric Jennings is um, humility. Just having grown into a decent human being. Not better than, not less than, but uh, I fit. And having something to contribute, for me it's music and birth, my passion for dogs, we have three, I mean, I being of service, wanting to, at the end of the day, to give and, 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 and make, make somebody else's experience a little bit better. I, I get, even though I'm a musician and I've said time and time again, it's, I consider it very narcissistic, but there is still a huge part of me that loves being of service. And it's not that I'm trying to, to fill a void or something. I just see, to me, we live in a world where it's take, 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 take. What can I get? What can I get? What can I get? And I get it. I completely understand that, but the source of who I am is I like, you know, my friend Khalees would say to serve is to be served, and that's about the best way I can answer that, because when he said that, he broke it down to how much joy there is in giving. Who is Eric Jennings? Musician man, dog man. Boyfriend, been with my queen of 19 years. Wow. Yeah, July 4th. We celebrated 19 years. And, um, recovering man. I've been living a certain way, I would say, for almost 19 years myself. October 26, 1997. I've been on a certain path since then, a spiritual path, which is pretty much the foundation of all these other things we talked about. But, um, I'm also crazy. If you want really the, the, the best answer to that question, ask my girlfriend. <laughs> Sometimes you find out really about people when you ask the one closest to them. But, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm typical. Um, I lose my temper. I throw tantrums. Uh, I meditate. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just a typical. I don't really think there's anything special about me, but I, but I revel in the fact that there is only one of me. I am, you know, this is it, but um, I, I don't feel like an exception, but I'm glad that I'm the one, if that makes any sense. Well, my last question, also open-ended, what would you say to any of the people listening in? Any and every one of them. Well, first I would say thank you for listening. Wow. And then I would also say make sure and continue to listen to Paul's podcast. And I would say go to blacklinereggae.com, enjoy some music, and definitely go to geishahitsquad.com and enjoy some music. And let me know what you think. And I would say, life is short. Be yourself. Rules. Break them.
don't listen to anybody. <laughs> It'll probably get you in trouble, but you'll find out what you're made of. True to self. It, it, it's scary that even, you know, in the music that we're talking, talking about is to me and not to get too far out there, but everything on the radio sounds the same to me. And originality has been, how do you say, it, it's been pressed down. It's not been uplifted or, or praised. What's been praised is fitting in. And I think that's why Miles Davis, all this stuff, I, I think the reason I, I love the artists that I do is not for imitation, but inspiration. And to me, they all have their own thumbprint. And they're not for everyone. I know some people who are bored to death when it comes to Miles Davis. I know people who can't stand culture. It's okay. I don't think something that powerful is going to be for the entire universe. Only those who are willing to listen. So, be yourself. Create something that's yours. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, man. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> thank you.